other stuff. Um. So, yeah. So I, I don't think talking about whether it could be like Chris Chester or Brian McDermott. I, I don't see that personally. Chris Chester maybe more than McDermott. I think because I just feel like Wigan and McDermott aren't a good fit. Um, people have speculated Trent Barrett maybe as a former player. I, I'm not sure he'd want the job, and I'm not sure he'd want to give him the job. So, so yeah. So I have now just done what I said I wouldn't do, but because <laughs> you kind of asked me to, I suppose. What? What? I don't know. Have you? Have you? Do you have any opinions on it? Uh, about Lamb leaving, um, he he has seemed quite uh, tired. I would say, um, in the sense of, um, you know, enthusiasm and kind of, you know, his ability to influence the team in a positive way as, 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 you know, I think that ship has sailed and it, it felt like it was inevitable, you know, um, but I, I think doing it after a win is the right way to do, right way to do it. Cause it doesn't feel like a direct sacking, does it? Which is yeah. if they'd done it after last week, I think that's how it would have felt. I think frank, if they'd done so. it after last week, there would have been an outcry of why is he not just going now? Yes. Yeah. The win against Castleford combined with the other results as well, all exactly. going Wigan's way. You, it felt like two wins, really. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you kind of, you're, you're, I think, you know, we'll talk about it later, but you, it feels like you're almost nailed on for the top six now. Um, yeah. Which, you, know, which you, you definitely wouldn't, wouldn't have said last week. We so. on, on Friday now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, moving yeah, across the borough to Lee shall we yeah go on uh, Lee prop Adam Sidlow has signalled his ambitions or lack of by signing a new one year contract extension with the Centurions a 33 year old joined the Centurions ahead of this season from Toronto Wolfpack he made more than 300 he has made more than 300 career appearances for Witness Workington Salford Bradford Toronto and Lee I think he's been one of their most consistent performers who's played at a Super League level this year. I think he should have been looking for a Super League deal. Yeah. I, I, it appeared for me, I mean, I, I, I liked Sidlow. I, I liked him when he was with us. Um, I always felt like he gave uh, gave a, a very good effort. And I felt like he's done that this year as well. Um, you know, kind of in a, in a poor team. He's, he, as you said, he's been probably one of the better players. I, I, yeah, I'd be surprised he, you know, he wouldn't have had suitors from, you know, players that, you know, or teams towards the bottom end of Super League yeah, or you're, you're newly promoted sort of, yeah. type team. You know, yeah. 33 as a prop, you know, he's probably got maybe. I'd be surprised if he didn't, if he couldn't go around again at the end of next year, even. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I suppose, you know, if he's comfortable there. Um, fair enough. Yeah, and he's a building block for them to potentially get some sort of promotion back into whatever the structure is going to be in 2023. Ben Reynolds as well as committed his future to Lee signed a new two year deal with the club. The 27 year old who rejoined the Centurions back earlier this year after a stint with Toulouse um, has only played 11 games this season uh, but he's um, yeah, signed a new deal that'll see him remain at Lee until 2023. I think he's a player that probably is more top end of the championship than bottom end of Super League, but I just think he hasn't had a, a strong enough run at it this year to suggest anything otherwise, unfortunately. I, I, I do quite like him as a player. He is entertaining. Yeah, yeah, and he'll get a chance to, to, to show those skills in the championship. Yep. Um, so EFC 78JU was pivoted from his Tom Lynham updates, um, now that that ship has sailed, and he's now providing updates about Paul McShane's injury. So he says, uh, Dowell Powell's gone and had an update about uh, McShane's injury and said, we don't think he's bad. That's Dr. Powell there. Um, he's due to potentially go for a scan next week, or at least on Tuesday. Um, they'll know by the next few days. So I think... Yeah, I would say Cass quite a neat shape, McShane back pronto. The, fu- the, the fun aspect of that update is I don't feel like I'm any clearer <laughs> about whether he's going to play at Magic Weekend, but it sounds like Cass are going to do everything they can to get him back on the field. <laughs> yes, but yeah, no, no uh, yeah, it's a, it's a classic, uh, it's an answer to a question, but it's uh, it's no real answer. 
Um, St. Helens forward Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook, friend of the show, has signed a new one-year deal to keep him at the club until the end of the 2022 season. The 35-year-old joined Saints from Harlequins in 2011 and has made 313 appearances. He has won three Grand Finals and one Challenge Cup with the Saints. I think that's a good deal for him, I would say. Um, I feel like he's become a bit of a cameo player for them this year. Um you know, coming on for 15 minutes, winding everybody up and then coming off again. <laughs> so, I think he's contributed more than I'd expected him to this year, I think. Right. Okay. Um, like you say, he's, he's kind of a cameo player, but he's been a, been there most games. It's not like... Um, I sort of wondered if him and Amor might kind of rotate games and not really ever be the focus but he started games when Matty Leeds was injured he's um, seems to have been kind of the choice a little bit ahead of Passy who's been like more the impact player and LMS has been the the guy that they'd bring off the bench sooner to, to keep things go keep things held together I, I think it, he's been more impressive than I was expecting and like you say he has wound people up yeah, because that's what he does. I think the only other option in my head for LMS is a year at the Broncos before he retires, but I'm not sure the Broncos have a appetite to make a a big money signing. Um, no, doesn't so, feel like it. Yeah, so it you know, it, it still could happen, you know, uh, a year from now. But yeah, I think it's um, sensible that one. Yep. Uh, Swinton have appointed Alan Coleman as head coach on a deal until the end of 2022. Uh, in 2019, Coleman joined Swinton as, as assistant coach to Stuart Littler, who parted ways with the Lions in June. He's previously enjoyed coaching spells with Lee Miners Rangers and the England Community Lions. Yep. Uh, most likely he'll be coaching them in League One, but um, it, it might give him more scope to find some more players from the community game that he knows quite well to uh, to bolster that squad and and stuff so it's an interesting one to see um, Bradford have signed prop Massimo Matongo on loan from Hull for the rest of the season the 25 year old has made 59 appearances for Hull since making his first team debut back in 2015 I think that was away against Wigan um, what do you what do you make of this signing for your side then um, he's He's played bits and pieces for us. I think, uh, I, I think, it, I think it's a little bit of um, um, additional kind of beef in the pack. I think um, something we kind of probably need as the season kind of you know players um, injuries start to toll up and that kind of thing. So yeah, I mean he's looked he's looked decent when I've seen him play before. So you know he's he's welcome for the year. He hasn't been a favourite. At- Hull this year I don't think in terms of selection so no. probably be looking to see what sort of deal he can get maybe in the championship to rebuild his, his career at 25 year old he needs to start playing um, yeah. and if he's going to yeah, play more in the championship then maybe that's the route he has to go down. Um, someone who's been playing in the championship for a long time is Sheffield winger Rob Warrensey who's announced he will retire from rugby league at the end of the season. The 36 year old winger has decided to hang up his boots and focus on life away from the sport following a stellar 18 year playing career. Warrensey has made almost 350 career appearances for London Broncos, Castleford, Halifax, Dewsbury and Sheffield. He won a League One Grand Final with Sheffield as well as the Northern Rail Cup and Championship Grand Final with Halifax. Yep. Um, Rugby League Deutschland has pulled off a major coup yeah. with the appointment. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent accent. Has pulled off a major coup with the appointment of former Great Britain international Andy Hay as their new performance director. Uh, Hay appeared in over 350 club matches in the UK um, and in a glittering career, yeah, uh, won the prestigious Challenge Cup in 99 while playing with the Leeds Rhinos. Um, after retiring as a player in the mid-2000s, he moved into coaching with Cast Tigers and also ha- held posts at Hull FC and Salford. Uh, he ended his stint in the UK as head coach of Featherstone. Uh, most recently, he held uh, he led the coaching and development department at Auckland Rugby League, uh, obviously New Zealand's largest rugby league district, uh, when he initiated several successful concepts, including the region of origin and the development of a non contact version of rugby league kiwi tag 
think I've heard of both of those things before, um, which has been adopted by the New Zealand Rugby League and rolled out nationally before moving to Germany last December. Um, Hay noted that at the centre of his immediate goals in the new role will be ensuring that Germany is well positioned to secure qualification for the 2025 Rugby League World Cup. I think he was an underrated player in his in his time. Um, he, he, yeah, I mean, I, I, he was, he was a poor little man's little Dennis Betts, but Dennis <laughs> Betts was very fucking good. Yeah, he, he had a perfectly respectable career. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not being. I don't want to be too rude, but, but I, I wouldn't call it glittering. But there you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the big positive. It seems like he's landed in their lap rather than uh, anything else. But that's. Uh, that's a positive for rugby league on the continent. Yeah. And finally, it's a bad news week for the and finally. As, um, a national conference league match between Milford and Alton Raiders was abandoned on Thursday night after a player was attacked. Uh, sorry, after a player attacked the referee. Alton were leading the match eight 0 shortly before half time when a Milford player was shown a yellow card by referee Joe Stern. He was then subsequently red carded for dissent, and according to reports, he punched the match official. Stern is a grade one official and is receiving support from the RFL's match officials department, while rugby league care support is also there if needed. A disciplinary investigation will now take place via the appropriate procedures set out in the RFL's operational rules, with the National Conference League dealing with the case under their disciplinary panel. The player has been stood down from playing duties pending an internal investigation, according to Milford, who will also fully cooperate with the wider investigation taking place. Police are also reportedly investigating the inf- incident and Milford did issue a statement the following morning after the game they said we acknowledge the incident involving one of our players and last night's referee first and foremost we send our best wishes to the referee the player has been involved at our club from the juniors and we have never witnessed anything like this from him in 20 years our club is built on strong foundations which absolutely include respect and such behaviours will not be tolerated in any way the player has been stood down from playing duties whilst we conduct an internal investigation and we will fully cooperate with the external investigation taking place I, I mean we've seen this happen in a game in France haven't we we've seen this happen even with the Greek coach before I can't recall too many incidents instances of it getting to this level on uh, on our own rugby league fields over here in the UK but this is um, an appalling story and hopefully with some strong and severe consequences that'll kind of show support to the community game referees yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, it goes without saying that it's a, you know, it's something that you don't want. To, nobody wants to see. Um, yeah, I mean, it ha- obviously, it sounds like there were plenty of people there to kind of um, make note of exactly what did happen, and and you know, I'm, I'm sure the the investigation will 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 take that, but of course, um, yeah, I mean, it, obviously, it's completely unacceptable. Um, Assuming that the player is guilty, um, obviously you, would, you wouldn't expect to see him on a rugby league field again, frankly. Yeah, and we do have a a history of crazy, insane fuck ups within our sport. And this player, you know, what 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 has alleged to have happened here would be joining that list. We also have a history of galvanising ourselves after these events, don't we? And hopefully this will sort of serve as a galvanizing force within the community game to say that we've gone too far with our abusive referees and clearly um, this incident is at the extreme end of that and hopefully it'll be it'll serve as a reminder to people to step back a bit from going too far because this kind of thing is is stupid absolutely uh, yeah all right um thanks to the oh we only had the one fan view didn't we in this week on the news uh, EFC's injury update um, shout out to BBC Sport Rugby League page totalrl.com and loverugbyleague.com they provide the stories of course for us to uh, share with you guys and comment on so thanks to those guys for their hard work do give them your clicks um, that's it for news we're now going to move into a full round of Super League match reviews <laughs> Okay, dokes, match reviews time and um, round 22 was another full round of Super League uh, and that, that makes it two in a row gosh it's like, well, it's like we're in May again 
<laughs> but it was all played on one day, which is, I think, the first time we've had that this season, where all the games have been played on the same day. And it started at 2 o'clock on the bank on holiday Monday afternoon.